Pras, I mean, uh, 23, you were at 80K. Finishing at 22K, there definitely has to be some, uh, you know, disappointment in For terms sure. of there There needs to be a case to, have you thought what to, what I could have done differently to hit into the 10K? Because it's a great position to be by the time 23 comes around. I agree. I agree. I mean, there is huge regret. I mean, I think one thing that I want to take away from this season is... I should be able to take more risk. You know, I'm I, I'm sometimes always happy to take the guy who's... And it's not your risk, by the way. It's points risk even. So if I have a situation where Son, I think, will do equally well as Haaland in a particular week, you can think about t- captaining Son even though you're scared of Haaland. I can't do that. I'm never able to do that. You know, if, if Liverpool have a good fixture and I don't have Salah, I will do... Even if it requires a hit... I will get Salah because I want to cover the captaincy. So basically, I'm always happy to have the 9, 10 players that have the most potential and all, by effect also are most owned. So then my movements don't work too drastically unless I get very lucky with that 11th player or that 10th player because then you're basically only straddling between your 10th and 11th player between the template. So I do feel that happened. And look, game week 32, game week 34 and 36 were actually not great at all for me because, you know, I was obviously not wildcarding. I had to sort of dead end my team to 34. 34 didn't turn out to be great, even though I had Mateta, which I feel I was lucky to get because I was able to sell Haaland for Mateta. So I don't think I got unlucky as such. It was just a case of I didn't hit the jackpot and I wasn't, I didn't take enough risk. Yeah, maybe just like when you're weighing it up, like it's something Zoff and I discussed last year. I think he's taken up his aggression by 10-15% up, right, Waitage? Like Zoff, we spoke yes. about this last season. Just a 10% adjustment in aggression gets you there. Like yeah. that's about it. Yeah. It doesn't have to be massive. Something to think about for sure. I mean, you yeah. you saw with my picks always. Um, they're always the, the, the sensible picks. Maybe sometimes it doesn't have to be. I did own Darwin for a while. Didn't work out. Yeah. I own Jackson. Uh, so I did try I think it's but also it getting wasn't... early. Like, plus, getting Richarlison, you both of you guys went early. I was a couple of weeks late. Like, Richarlison is a sensible pick, but then, like, you know, you're seeing, like, I personally, I'm like, oh, I want to see him get two or three starts. LR saw one game and he's like, next game, Richarlison is in. I like, yeah. I want to see two or three games. And maybe when you see, like, you know, blue chip asset performing, get on him early. You get those differentials for two weeks. That's enough. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Move, and move then on. we have to talk about your rise, man, LR. Uh, this is what late riser stands for. 753 in game week 33 to 177. Regardless of what happened before, that is massively impressive. So what did you do differently? Just play freely? I play freely, but I wasn't stupid. Like, uh, you know, it's uh, if you guys have noticed how I was talking on the pod, I wanted to practice things that I wanted to play into next season. So there was reflection that happened by the time 30-33 came around in terms of, okay, I want to pay more attention to penalties. Mm-hmm. I want to not do stupid things for the sake of being stupid. Like 36 or 37, I could have captained uh, anybody but Haaland. I captained Haaland because I was like, no, he's the best option. Let's not be stupid here. Like, I didn't do something that Zoff tells me, you know, there's a very thin line in being different and being different for the sake of it. And I want to tread on... Really being different only if there is a genuine case for it. Otherwise, play normal, good FPL, and the returns will come. That's about it. it. It's what we saw with Isak. It's what we saw with Trippier, right? It's actually most of the times just one or two players. You don't really need to double down that massively, go that different. And you have to acknowledge something that we did always is the template is very strong. Yeah. And I didn't have many strong EO bets against as well because I think the template also diverged a fair bit. Uh, and this was without Guardiola also, so you know, happy about that too. The but I want to talk about the fast these days. Like players can go like you know, I remember Watkins. He was like nineteen nine percent to own, and I think after a couple of game weeks, he was like four. Yeah, yeah. here's something okay. I want to discuss when I'm discussing my rank fall because there was hard looking at done in terms of how you guys are hedging against, and I think there's a middle ground I can find next season when I'm trying to play this. This is a good example of to illustrate that a lot. Yeah. So what you see here, right? And you'll see very, especially between Zoff and I, you'll see very 
different sort of charts. So what the red lines indicate is the points loss relative to EO. And what the blue lines indicate is the points gain relative to EO. So if you see around the 21, 22, 23 mark, my, my red, red lines are bigger and bigger. But also see the lines of my blue lines. If you move to Zed's Zoff's chart very quickly, just look at the size of the lines of his uh, general, chart, whether it's blue, it's small. whether it's whether it's blue or red, like right? it's smaller lines. This effectively talks to our own playing styles, where I take a lot more risk against effective ownership, etc. But I'll just indulge here for a couple of minutes because I want to talk to you through the learning that I had. If you can go to the previous charts of. So my season dismantled between 20 to 26, 27, right? Where I didn't have Saka, I didn't have Watkins. And I very clearly remember this moment where, plus it was you and I, Zoff was missing that pot. And we were talking about Saka and there was a point where there was a blah, blah, blah moment. He blanked for five, six weeks. And then I was about to sell him, but I actually said, I don't think it's the bad thing. Uh, it's uh, You need to show patience with Sakana because his underlying numbers have actually improved in the last two, three weeks. At this point, I had already predetermined that I want to get rid of Saka because of maybe what I was saying because of getting tuned into De Bruyne. De Bruyne had a double a little later. This was predetermination. And before clicking the buttons and actually selling Saka, I was talking to myself in terms of what his underlying numbers are good. You don't need to sell him. He's actually becoming better. But there was this predetermined thinking and I wasn't flexible enough as an FPL manager to switch my opinion. And I think that's the key learning here. There are two things. A, data presents itself where Saka might have been a poor option four or five weeks ago. But he became a better option because in the last two, three, five, six weeks, the underlying data improved. A, second thing is you need to actually pay a lot more attention to historical long-term data when it comes to your 8 million plus picks like the likes of Bukayo Saka. You need to pay more attention to penalties. And Move it, move it. I've I've done a chart where my rank history, etc., shows where I've determining that fall. So what happened here? To 21 is when I sold Saka and Watkins, and my season dismantled here because between 21 and 27, I fell from 221k to 650k. And in the and the next chart, these are the FPL points between 21 and 26, 27, where Saka and Watkins scored the most FPL points. So I absolutely got destroyed in terms of you know, this leads to negative tilt. The learning that I can say is something I said in my scout interview when I was interviewed by Joe for the first time uh, for Meet the Manager, where I was talking about people are scared to sell this player who's Ali own. If it doesn't work out, reverse the move immediately. And this is something you mentioned at the top of the pod. If it's a learning to take from this, I don't want to stop myself from having the courage and conviction to make these moves. But if it's a very highly owned asset, and if it backfires immediately, and it looks like it's going to backfire immediately, which I was aware of, where I knew that Saka's underlying numbers are improving, no matter what, I need to switch that mistake immediately to make sure that I don't bleed more. I think that would have made a difference. And that's yeah. the learning I want to take away. And also, from this is the like time that. when Arsenal were, I think, putting five, six past every team, right? And I think that also plays a factor when you realize that the team has such a high ceiling for goals. Even yeah. though, like, you might have a game where Saka gets the odd assist, there is going to yeah. be a game where he has, like, multiple goal involvements as well. Yeah. And, and and something I am as a purist, right? I don't pay much attention to EO. But before selling a player like Saka, I want to maybe ask myself twice. He's got high EO. Are you sure? If I did, when I click those buttons, when his underlying data was improving. Do you remember that pot trust? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Like, but I just want the... to also tell you, you got very, very unlucky too. Yes. Like, let's remember that. Like, you know, other people also sold Saka. I think Zoff, you sold him 32, 33? Yes. He blanked 33. He obviously scored. Then you freeded him in. He scored okay in 35. He missed out 37 or 38. It's timing. It's, timing so, is, determined, is everything, right? So a little bit like... And I was going to sell Saka this game week as well. But yeah. what happened, we had the leak that De Bruyne was bent. So I ended up doing De Bruyne to Jota instead. I had two free transfers. I remember that. I remember that. So look, these are just some sliding door moments in a season. So I feel like you took a risk. It's your style of play. What I what we don't want as and I'm now speaking as a listener of of FPLY. What we don't want is to your risk taking ability is the thing that sort of appeals to us the most because you don't care about you. You go with your conviction. So look at it, but don't change too much, man. I mean, we love you for that, Ella. Yeah, I know, but I think just as a learning, reverse the move if it backfires. Fair, like immediately fair. reverse the move. Like especially as content creators, like let's get into our heads. Sometimes we say things, and that sort of 
tends to play in my mind, you know, because I'm so vocal against Saka and I'm bringing him back in one week, etc. No, fuck that, man. He's done well. Get him back. It's a mistake. Acknowledge it. It's fine. Like, you have to be flexible about yeah, don't shit double like this. Down. And Just because you said something don't, don't. in a piece yeah. of content. Exa- yeah. I have and, that, the, and the second thing, and, and the second thing is the long-term injury. Just as a learning. Like, it's a massive learning. Like, getting sucked into a... Th- and Pras, you were right about this. Like, you told us also. It's been a 30-minute, 14... I think it was two assists against Newcastle, if I'm not mistaken. Or something of that sort. He came back from a very long injury. And when it comes to these players who have long injuries... We've seen that with Salah this year. We've seen that with Haaland this year. And we've seen that with De Bruyne. They take a while to get going. And, and just because they're big players and they show... One sexy move in 30 minutes, it's fine. Like, I need to be more pras then. Where it's... There needs to be a rationality that he's coming back from a big injury. It's all right. He will take some time to get going. That's all. I'm done. We want to just shout outs now to our Discord. Go to the previous charts of if you want to say anything in terms of... Not in terms of mind, really. It's just pretty much like, you know, self-explanatory. You want to see anything? I think pras is actually a good balance of both of us. Yeah, I was a mid- like I wasn't completely EO because when I'm behind, I try not to look at EO. In fact, genuinely, I have not been making EO led decisions. I've been making more. I'm more scared of making decisions. And you know what? And actually, I need to get this out of the system where I feel like if I sell this player, I can't watch the Liverpool match. If I don't have Salah against home to Sheffield United, how can I watch that game? And because I have, you know, we all started playing FPL because we love watching football. I have to have the game on. So. Maybe I need to sort of disengage playing FPL with watching football as well sometimes where you can take a risk. But how do you deal with it? Do you watch the match, LR, when you don't have like a 100% uh, EO player or you don't watch the match? Oh, so I, I want to uh, tell myself that watch the match, etc. But if that one goal goes in, you're deflated. And we're human. Like, uh, I've told myself at least 10 times, you know what, the idea is to scout and to help you make the decision for next week. But emotions do take over as much as you're telling yourself it's difficult, man. We're human. I find this easily the hardest part of playing FPL. Yeah. How do you actually then watch the game? Well, I do something, but I yeah. can't really speak about it after the trouble we got with the BBC. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. We understand. Yeah. Basically, Zoff's the biggest hedger there is. That's all. Yeah. Uh, but Zoff, I want to go to your chart. Just want to uh, double down on the inspiration that you can take uh, going into next season is while you maintain those small red lines around the 25, there are a nice bunch of big blue lines towards the end of the season. Those are your differentials, man. So all it takes is one or two. And these were all your gut bat because I knew you were hot on Isak throughout. Uh, you kept saying in our Discord, so he's Newcastle starting forward. He's a great pick when Wilson isn't there. You didn't swerve from him. Your conviction was there and you didn't really... Uh, Ask anyone or anything. This was your conviction. So just double down on that next season. That's all. Definitely. 